What's up guys, Bjorn here. Today I'm finally back in World of Warcraft. We're taking a look at the Demonology Guide for the Mage Tower. I did take a little bit of a break from WoW, I wasn't feeling it uh, too much, but now with this uh, Mage Tower update coming back, I'm actually really excited to play. And the first challenge I did was the Demolock one. I completed it uh, just uh, a couple of hours ago. And we're gonna take a look at exactly how in just a few minutes here. First, you might want to consider subscribing if you want more guides like this, more WoW content. It would really help me out. Before we take a look at the actual kill VOD, I was thinking we should go through the preparations a little bit. Because there are a few things that you want to have down before going in there. Now, the first thing is obviously the talent build. We have a pretty straightforward demo build here. The one thing out of touch is the Doom in the second talent row. Normally you would play probably Demonic Calling here, but the problem is you won't really Shadow Bolt, you won't Demon Bolt that much in the challenge, so this won't help you uh, as much as it normally does. But more importantly, the challenge has three different targets, right? So Doom will gain a huge amount of value due to the tree target nature, and it's also instant. It's a generator that you can actually use while moving, so it's just really, really strong. It's also going to be your uh, highest damage ability probably in this encounter. Definitely pick Doom here. The other talents are straightforward. I usually pick Demon Skin in third row because it's just a lot of extra healing for you and your pet if you take some chip damage in there. Demonic Strength is really strong because it will actually allow you to destroy the Rune Seer shields uh, a lot quicker, a lot easier, and this will line up with most of them as well pretty well. So definitely go for Demonic Strength. Also just a solid amount of DPS on three targets. The other uh, talents are pretty easy here. We do need Mortal Coil specifically to interrupt the Sigrin ability that we're going to talk about later. So it is pretty important to pick that one. But in order um, for you to do maximum damage, I would probably suggest picking Bilefin, Felgarden, Decon here. But obviously you could switch some of this up if you wanted to. Now, there's also going to be some macros needed. And I just... Uh, create the bare minimum of n amount of macros for myself and they're also pretty straightforward we have a mortal coil macro we're just uh, targeted sigrin beforehand because we're only ever gonna mortal coil sigrin in this fight probably so just having that as our normal coil keybind will actually allow us to coil sigrin on uh, a quicker reaction time instead of having to like target her first and then coil her because you will actually need to coil sigrin pretty uh, quickly let's say the same goes for the fear macro, I just have the same thing but the fear instead on Sigrin because sometimes you will maybe miss the coil or you won't have it and then you will need to fear instead. Curse of Exhaustion uh, has a similar principle here because the only thing that will actually uh, make you use Curse of Exhaustion in this fight is when Jarl Velbrand starts chasing down you or your pet. And in that case it's really nice to just have a target macro associated with that so that you don't have to target him. You can just instantly press Curse of Exhaustion. Now obviously you could make all of these macros better here with like clear target or target the previous mob or whatever you want afterwards. You can also add some extra clauses to make them a little bit more fail safe. But this I found was working fair enough for me. Then I also created a pet attack macro on Sigrin because sometimes she will start running towards you. She will uh, lose ag or your pets will lose aggro on her even though they technically have threat. In that case you just need to send your pets at her and she will start attacking them again. So I just made a pretty easy pet attack macro here and uh, just make sure I was spamming it pretty much every time she was moving towards me. And then I, after failing a couple of times, made one last little macro here, just a target rune seer and then the interrupt, right? Because sometimes I was getting to the very last bit of the fight and I was accidentally interrupting something else uh, because of my other target macros. So that really screwed with me a little bit. I was a little bit tilted, so I just made a quick interrupt macro as well for Falyar so that I didn't mess that up again. And other than that, you don't really need any macros I found. However, consumables are going to be pretty important. You would always want, obviously, the Shadow Core Oil, the food and stuff like that. I also picked up some Augment Runes for that little bit of uh, extra DPS. Now, I'm sure you can do it fine without Augment Runes. I don't think you need these, but it doesn't hurt to be an extra little bit of safe, right? And you should definitely always use potions, of course. Uh, especially for that big opener Tyrant, it's really nice to have a potion. And 
something I forgot about for the longest time here. It was actually the drums. You can just buy the drums, right? It's so much easier with the drums. For some reason, I totally forgot that drums existed and I was playing this fight without them. I did reach the enrage timer a couple of times without the drums. I was like, what the fuck? I killed one of the mobs and there's two mobs alive and they're enraging. Why? Why, Why do I not have the DPS for this? Uh, and then I realized, okay, obviously I've forgotten about the drums. And I did actually complete it on the second try with drums, even though... I used four of them, we'll get to that later. And the very last thing here is of course the gear. Now you can do a lot of stuff with the gear. Uh, you can start equipping tons of items from previous expansions. You can start equipping broken legion items. Two of the most obvious ones are obviously Heart of Azeroth and the legendary cloak from BFA. You should definitely get those if you haven't already uh, from your bank or wherever they are. But unfortunately for me, I actually created this very character in 9.1 for the Sanctum of Domination raid. So I did not have any old gear, I didn't have anything from BFA, and I just simply had to complete it in my 9.1 gear. So I figured, hey, that's actually a great proof of concept. Let's see if it's actually a lot more difficult with the normal gear. And I found it to be pretty straightforward still because frankly, the DPS is not really the problem here. If you play your tyrant setups well, if you have all the consumables, then you will kill this encounter with like a minute to spare on the engage or, or something like that. So it actually isn't that big of a deal when it comes to the gear for the demon lock encounter. That said, it's obviously going to be easier if you do have the Heart of Azeroth or the Ashrakamas Resolve or whatever you want to put on there. So go nuts here, guys. So without further ado, let's get straight into the actual um, guide and let's get into the kill bot. Okay guys, so let's take a look at the actual encounter then. There are three different ads. We have Sigrin, Velbrand and Falier, And uh, they all do some different stuff, but they're all pretty straightforward when you really get down to it. Falier, uh, the rune seer, he doesn't really do a whole lot. Once in a while he spawns three runes on the floor that you'll have to go pick up. And uh, she, he also has a shield cast where he will uh, do a massive amount of AoE damage if you want interrupt it and in order to interrupt it you need to first break the shield so it's kind of a mini dps check with an interrupt attached to it Jarl Velbrand, the melee guy he will first uh, start off by throwing axes at you that does a little bit of damage and then he will also once in a while start focusing you hunting you down and uh, slapping you with a ton of melee stuff that's when you curse of exhaustion him and kite him and then we have sigrin the biggest girl she does a little bit of everything she throws spears at you that you'll have to dodge she uh, charges you once in a while rams you back knocks you a little bit it's really annoying she also gets a buff where she will pulse aoe damage to her entire room if she's interrupted or feared or whatever and sigrin will also once in a while call some valkyr to charge through the room uh, and that's basically a mechanic where you have to stand in a certain spot it's very very similar to the chains uh, on the uh, gore boss in Theater of Pain. Now, in terms of your warlock stuff, I would recommend setting up a portal uh, somewhere close to mine and then also a gateway somewhere close to mine because the runes will usually spawn in a triangular pattern um, in the middle of the room, kind of like where my portals and gateway are set up right now. So in order to get to them quickly, when you might be somewhere else, it's really nice to just have the portal and the gateway down to begin with. I usually started off to the right side of the room and started off with the precast demo bolt on Sigrin, as you would um, anticipate, right? And then I also sent in my pet pretty early so he would get aggro before the bolt hit, because him having aggro on Sigrin is pretty nice here. Then I'm just going to doom up all of the three different targets and I'm just going to start pumping into Jarl Velbrand here. And this might be optimal, might not be. I also swap target to Sigrim pretty quickly here so that she will uh, not jump after me as much. And this is another extremely important thing in the opener here. If you stand in this uh, spear here, this AoE, she will actually not knock you back when she charges you. And this is incredibly useful because if she knocks you there, if she cancels your Tyrant cast, then your opener is obviously going to be a lot worse. You won't be able to get as many imps out. So actually making sure to um, to stand in that spear to begin with, not get knocked, is very, very important. Now, here comes the first runes. I go around collecting those. 
I'm using the gateway there pretty early. And all this time I'm trying to keep the three mobs grouped here. Because if they're grouped then I will do a lot more implosion damage. I will do a lot more Felguard spin damage. And here comes the first mechanic of the fight. So Sigrim will uh, start empowering herself and that's when you should coil her, right? So as soon as she starts the cast, you coil her, you interrupt the cast and she won't get the buff. If you coil too late, she will get the buff before being coiled and then you won't be able to stop it with the coil. In that case, you will just have to fear her and then fear her again when the fear runs out. It's not as big of a deal, but it will lose you a bit of DPS, which is going to be a little bit important during a while. So, I'm just playing the fight as normal, I'm pretty much keeping Doom up and everything, spending my shards, and I should also probably have used Vilefin once more before this Tyrant comes up here, but that doesn't really matter that much. In general, the damage of the fight isn't extremely important compared to the mechanics, obviously, so uh, prioritizing damage is probably not the best idea here. Here we can see the first Valkyrie charge, and uh, as you see there I was pretty lucky, I was already stood in the right spot. Here also you'll see my first Tyrant coming up here in the wild. So here you might say, okay, um, why aren't you Tyranting earlier? Well, that's because I don't have Wilfreds, so I will actually um, not be able to Tyrant once every minute. And in that case, I would rather just wait for my Green Mar to be up with every single Tyrant here. So you can see me doing a big, another big Tyrant here with full Green Mar Vile Fiend and uh, quite a lot of imps actually might struggle a little bit to get this many imps especially when uh, new to the challenge but it will come eventually here i'm trying to target sigrin mostly because as i said earlier she will start running towards you most of the time and having your pets already on her at that point can be really nice otherwise you obviously need to focus the shield when this guy casts the shield so here comes another pair of angels she knocks me back and when it comes to that shield, it isn't really that difficult to get it down. As you see, I have more than enough time to get it down. But that is because I'm using Demonic Strength for, for it. So make sure you save Demonic Strength Rat. It's really, really strong in order to, to get it down quickly. See here, another angel that I'll have to um, dodge a little bit. And you can see here that Jarl Velvan starts to pummel my little pet here. And that's where I send my pet away to ma minimize the melee uptime on Jarl. Uh, that Jarl has on him so that I will um, be able to save him. You can see even with that uh, I'm not ma ma managing it extremely well here. Even with that uh, my pet is dropping pretty low and so am I. But fortunately it is fine to just like not do that much damage in these uh, phases. There I let an, a rune actually go out which was incredibly dangerous but I did manage to survive it somehow. And uh, that obviously shouldn't happen, but for some reason I didn't see it. I wonder if it was maybe under my portal or under my UI or, or something like that. Thankfully, you will get these yellow orbs once in a while in the fight that heals you. And now we're coming up to the last tyrant setup of the um, of the pool here. You can see I'm not using my Grimmar for this tyrant, even though I could, because uh, runes here will actually start using a lot of those shields uh, and. Uh, if he uses two shields in a row, I won't have my interrupt for it, which means that I will need to interrupt it with Grimmar Felguard, actually. And that's why I'm saving my Grimmar Felguard here. But you can also see that with this amount of DPS here, I'm doing a thousand DPS. I do actually not get a lot of those nasty overlaps that you can get if you maybe have a little bit lower DPS. So that's why getting uh, drums, getting pots, just popping every single consumable, augment runes, was so big for me, because I actually managed to um, do so much more damage with that. You can see there that I managed to um, actually miss the Sigrin cast and I had to fear her after the AoE went off, but it didn't matter, I was already killing them. And there we go, that's the challenge done. Now I would say the main problems when you're starting out with this is to um, keep your pet alive when the Jarl starts bashing him because there's going to be nasty overlaps where you have like a Valkyrie charge, a rune set and the Jarl will actually punish your pet at the same time and in that case it is really really nice to have a pet move to bound so you can just send your pet away and move to a certain position but otherwise 
I don't really think it's that big of a deal. One last thing I wanted to mention here is that you should not macro your drums into your trinket <laughs> macro that, as I did here because apparently you can still use drums when you are sated, right? So I actually ended up using three drums this fight even though I only benefited from one which was pretty troll, it cost me a little bit of gold so just don't make that silly mistake when you're at it, right? Alright guys, that was the Demolock challenge. I hope you really enjoyed it, I hope you learned something, and more than anything, I hope you have a ton of fun in there trying it out yourself. Now, it is uh, maybe a little bit tricky still, even though the mechanics are technically pretty straightforward, the overlaps can be pretty nasty, and especially like keeping your pet alive can be pretty tough sometimes at the start. So. Definitely don't get discouraged if this takes you a while, right? Remember, you have an infinite amount of tries in there, so you can just uh, try out as many stuff as you like. As I uh, briefly told you at the intro, I did take a bit of a break from WoW. I wasn't really feeling it lately. And I also had a um, pretty unfortunate lineup where my apartment's uh, ventilation got uh, renovated just as the Mage released. So I couldn't really play a lot for the, over the last couple of days. But now I'm at least finally able to to grind the mage tower and i will try to complete both the other warlock specs challenges but also maybe some challenges on some other characters that i find interesting so stay tuned for that guys if you want to see more of that make sure you subscribe make sure you hit the like button if you like the video otherwise have a great day have fun in the mage tower and i'll see you in the next one bye bye huh oh you're still here well I'm sorry, I think you should uh, probably go and check out a video maybe over here or somewhere here. You can even subscribe down here, that would be really, really nice. I would highly appreciate that. Uh, I'm gonna go snort some more lines, see ya. <laughs>